Virtual reality is the next frontier of gaming, and PCs are the leading platform for experiencing VR. But VR headsets require serious computing power to reach their full potential. In this video, we'll cover the PC hardware demands for VR gaming, so let's get started. Today, PC gamers have two solid VR headsets on the market, the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift. While the Rift and Vive offer slightly different user experiences, they're both on the cutting edge of technology and they have the same PC hardware requirements. These are the official minimum requirements for both headsets. The companies say you need hardware at least this powerful to get smooth frame rates in games built for VR. The GTX 970 and R9390 are upper mid-range graphics cards from each company's previous generation of GPUs, but they are still very powerful. Here's a breakdown of current graphics cards ranked from most powerful to least. The cards listed in green meet the minimum requirements for VR gaming. Anything above them in blue are even more powerful, and anything below in red are not powerful enough. Now, this does not mean that the 970 or 390 will perform every VR game perfectly, and some VR games will run just fine on less powerful GPUs. Let's look at the same thing for the recommended CPU, the i5-4590. Here, we're only looking at Intel CPUs because unfortunately AMD's current offerings don't really stack up. Oculus and HTC cite last generation's 4590 as their minimum CPU, which is roughly equivalent to this generation's i5-6500. Again, these are just general guidelines. For most VR games, any i5 CPU from the last several years will be powerful enough. Even i3s and AMD's faster CPUs should work for many games, but they aren't fast enough to recommend for a VR gaming build. To understand why these headsets require such powerful hardware, let's crunch some numbers. We want to figure out how many pixels need to be rendered every second, and then we can compare the demands of VR to more traditional gaming setups. Both the Rift and the Vive have displays with very high pixel density that sit right in front of your eyes. Each headset uses one 1080 by 1200 display for each eye, which combines to an effective resolution of 2160 by 1200. By comparison, the current most common PC resolution, 1080p, is 1920 by 1080. But the rendering resolution of VR is actually even higher. Both headsets render an extra 40% buffer to compensate for lens distortion. That means the actual rendered resolution is around 3024 by 1680. So we have a lot of pixels which require serious computational power. But to make it even more difficult, we need to render all of those pixels really fast. The refresh rate of the Rift and Vive is 90 Hz, which means they can display up to 90 frames per second. And for VR, it's important to get as close to that 90 FPS as possible. Every lost frame is all the more noticeable with the screens right in front of your eyes. So we ideally want 90 FPS to be our minimum FPS. For comparison, most LCD monitors have a refresh rate of only 60 Hz, and gaming on normal monitors can be comfortable down to even 30 FPS. Often when we talk of good PC gaming conditions, we're talking about 1080p resolution at 60 FPS. For VR headsets with the rendering resolution of 3024 by 1680 and a refresh rate of 90 Hz, this creates a graphical demand of 457 million pixels per second. That's a lot. 1080p at 60 FPS equates to 124 million pixels per second, or roughly a quarter the demand of VR. Gaming at 60 FPS on 4K resolution, which is 3840 by 2160, requires 498 million pixels per second. So, rendering a game on a VR headset is nearly as demanding as rendering that game on 4K resolution at 60 FPS, and doing that is incredibly difficult. As we can see in these 4K gaming benchmarks, the current most powerful graphics card on the market, the GTX 1080, has a hard time hitting 60 FPS in most games on 4K. It averages 59 FPS in Grand Theft Auto V, 50 FPS in Battlefield 4, and only 43 FPS in The Witcher 3, the most demanding game currently available. To make the demands even more daunting for VR headsets, they have to render a slightly different scene for each eye to ensure correct parallax and depth cues. This is known as stereo rendering, and it increases both the CPU and GPU demand compared to rendering the same image on a single flat screen. In this screenshot, you can see that each eye sees a slightly different perspective. In worst case scenarios, stereo rendering can almost double the graphical demand, but usually it only adds a small percentage. Let's look at the raw pixel count again. 
Now, if you factor in the slight multiplier of stereo rendering, it's possible that some games will require even more power to run in VR versus 4K at 60fps. Looking at these numbers, you might be worried about your PC handling games on the Rift or Vive. Thankfully, you should be able to enjoy VR without annihilating your wallet. Developers can take advantage of various techniques to reduce rendering demands. And according to Oculus, all made-for-VR games are designed to run well on the minimum specifications at acceptable graphical settings. Of course, this all depends on the specific game and its graphical intensity. For the most part, games made for VR are designed with lower graphical quality compared to today's most impressive PC games. Well, that's a bummer. It's a necessary sacrifice to ensure large numbers of gamers can afford to play VR. Right now, you can build a PC that meets the minimum requirements for VR for around $850. If you're cutting some corners, you can get that as low as $600. PC hardware is constantly improving. For the latest recommendations on hardware for VR gaming, check our links in the video description below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, like or dislike this video, and consider subscribing to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.